Yo, hey guys, Small Mouth Crush. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how I will spool a reel, a spinning reel, with braid. Whether it's the right way or the wrong way, everyone's got an opinion. I know it sounds basic, but you might learn something. For those that have been around the block a few times, you might pick something up in this video, so stick around to the end. Plus, I'm going to share with you a sneaky little rod, five foot eight. Five foot eight spinning rod that I use quite a bit, especially coming up this time of the year. We'll get into it. That's all coming up. Well, hey, if you're new to the channel, I put a lot of great information. I have over 500 videos. We got a lot of tournament practice. We have actual tournaments. We have tips, how to's on the water. A little bit of everything. We also have the Small Mouth Crush, a live show every Monday at 8 p.m. We get to interact with all the people in the community, answer all the questions, listen to the, uh, the great guests that we have. And, and really the best part is hanging out with you guys, reading in the comments, interacting with the fans of Small Mouth Crush. I certainly appreciate that. And also, don't forget, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel and make sure you hit that bell notification to let you know when I'm putting up a new video. So I love spinning rods. I own a lot of spinning rods and I fish spinning rods quite a bit. Most of my spinning rods have braid. I love a braid to a fluorocarbon leader and I really love to use Cortland braid. I like the Cortland Master braid and a lot of times it's real thin diameter, especially for my smallmouth applications light line, light baits, finesse baits, deep water, all that kind of fun stuff. Five, eight, ten pound braid is most commonly found on all my reels. So filling up a spinning reel with braid is really important to do it the right way. I'm going to walk you through how I do it. I like to take some sort of monofilament. So I just have some Berkley trialing here and I'm going to fill the spool of this spinning reel so I don't have to use so much braid. Now that's going to save you money and that's also going to save you a little bit of hassle because a lot of times if you just put straight braid on your spinning reel, it's just going to slip. You're not going to get a good grip and so that's why I really love to use that monofilament as a backing. So this reel is a Shimano Vanford. I really like a 3000 series and you may have noticed already I'm putting it on a, a unique spinning rod, especially for people that fish for bass. This says Icon. Yeah, that's a St. Croix Icon. It's actually a rod designed for walleye fishing. This one here is five foot eight, heavy power, fast action, and they have heavy metal rating for it. So it's for ripping metal baits off the bottom. That's what I'm assuming. That's not what I'm using it for. I'm going to get into that too, but let's, let's first spool this reel up and then I'm going to show you a little sneaky way of how I like to fish a five foot eight St. Croix Icon. So the first thing I'm going to do is put this monofilament backing on the reel. So again, I want to show you the way I do it. Whether it's right or wrong, it's the way I have the most success with. So I'm actually going to use a device here called the spool mate. And what this does is allow me to put tension on the spool of line and it's just going to help me be able to, to put that spool of line on the reel much more efficient with one of these. So all I do is I put this line through the insert here and then there's a band that allows me to put some tension on that and I can adjust that to whatever type of tension I want. So now it just pulls off the spool. Now it's a little tight. I'm going to loosen that up just a little bit. There, that's perfect. Look at that. Now she's going to come off perfect for me. So now I have to take the end and just thread it through the tip of the rod and bring it all the way down to the spool. So I just grab that and I start inserting that line all the way through. Now I'm going to flip the bail and all I do is I tie an overhand knot twice. So I'm just going to take that I'm going to make a loop knot and just cinch down on that. Now the key is to cut that tag line as close as you can to your knot because you don't want any extra line getting in the way. So I just took a scissors and I cut it as close as I possibly can to that knot. I'm going to flip the bail. So I have an interesting method as far as getting this mono backing onto the reel. I'll show you. So this interesting way of feeding that mono as well as my braid onto my reel involves a monster bass box. So this is an old monster bass box. If you're not familiar with monster bass, it's actually a monthly subscription where they give you baits based on your region that you fish. It's an awesome concept. You can find some more information about that in the link below as well. But I'm going to take an empty box. I have it hollowed out here. I'm going to take a pen or a pencil. I'm going to put a hole in here. You're going to see what I'm going to do in a second. 
So before we go any further, you're going to probably be like, hey, that's not how I learned how to put line on the spinning reel. Everyone, a lot of people do it label up. So for a lot of people, they're taught label up so it comes off the spool and prevents line twists. I don't have a problem doing it this way with line twists or anything. I think it's really efficient and it's super easy. So I've just been doing it this way. So what I'm going to do is actually take this pen. I'm going to pop a hole through the line. So the spool mate here, again, I can adjust the tension. So you don't necessarily have to use this box with this, but it'll help. So all I'm going to do is, you, you know where I'm going with this, I'm going to insert this just like so. So here it is, it's very simple, now I can just peel off line and I really want to set this at about the same height from my rod tip as I'm going to spool it onto the reel. Okay, now that I got that all set, I'm also going to use a paper towel and then I do like to either use some type of moisture, so water on a paper towel is fine, this line and lure conditioner is good, real snot will work, pretty much anything you can get your hands on uh, will be fine. I just want a little bit of moisture uh, on that line as it's going into your reel. So I'm just going to spray a little bit here and get it nice and damp and that should be perfect. Okay, I actually set my box with the line up on my shelf here and then I put my big heavy top water box on top of it just to position it properly. So now I have the paper towel moistened. I have it, I have the line nice and tight and I'm just pointing the rod tip at the box and I'm going to just reel and keep tension on that. It's kind of hard to do with the camera at one angle so you have to bear with me. But I'm just going to reel that line so I'm just putting the backing. I want a base. A base is going to be really important. So it really takes a little bit of patience. It takes a little bit of trial and error just to know exactly how much backing you should have. And it really depends on the diameter of the braid that you're going to be putting on. So I'm using 20 pound braid for this application, which is rare. A lot of times they use smaller diameter. So 20 pound diameter braid is going to be a little bit more diameter than obviously a five or eight pound. And so I don't need as much backing, but you still want quite a bit because ideally I only want to put about a hundred yards of braid on this spinning rod. In fact, probably 75 would be fine, but I'm going to go with a hundred. And so I'm just going to keep tension. I'm going to keep reeling and I'm just eyeballing it. Everything appears to be going on good. It's nice and tight. I probably can go just a little bit more. That should be plenty of backing for my braid. Okay, now that I have the proper backing on, now I just have to simply cut the line. So cut the line, and of course we have to attach our braid. And I think now I'm going to give you a little hint. So I use this short rod to get back in some serious, serious cover. And that's the reason why I'm going with 20 pound braid as opposed to a lighter diameter. And I am using high vis yellow. I like yellow because a lot of times I'm going to have a nice, you know, five, six, seven foot leader. And there's going to be times where perhaps I'm throwing a wacky rig Senko or even a tube or a creature bait or whatever the case may be and I'm flipping it back into some cover and that line's just kind of floating on the water, letting it fall, watching that bait. And any little tick in the line or any movement, I can really see where that is. Also, when I'm way back in there, sometimes it's dark. I'm not kidding. Like it's, uh, I'm getting this in some, some crazy places. I'm going to explain that here at the end of the video. And sometimes this high vis just helps me really see where that line is and see where that bait is in relationship to everything. All right, quiet on the set. Okay. Okay. Quiet on the set. All right. So same deal. I'm going to put the spool mate on my braid spool. That's going to help me with tension. So here's another cool thing about the spool mate. It's just going to also hold that line in place. So look at how cool this spool mate is. It's just going to hold that line in place and allow me to uh, just cut it. And that tag end's always going to be right there ready to go. You're not going to have a big mess. You're not going to have a bunch of line falling off your spools, which is extremely helpful. I've dealt with that for many, many years until I found these spool mates. So now that we got the spool mate on, now we have to take the braid and attach it to the mono backing. So I wish I could tell you the name of the knot that I use. Maybe you guys in the comments 
can let me know. I'm terrible at that. I'm not the one to teach knots. I've learned that. So if you know what this connection is, let me know. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take my mono and I'm going to make a loop, right? So I make a loop, I take my braid and I put that through the loop. I use my tongue and my mouth a little bit so it's a little odd, I know, bear with me. I grab that loop and I go about seven times down. I grab that bottom and I loop it back up seven times. So I'm going to bring it back through this loop here, pull it through, wet it, grab all four ends and pull tight at the same time, and there you go. Then of course I'm going to cut out, cut off these ends as well. So the deal is, again, I want to be as close to that knot as possible, so a good pair of scissors that cuts real clean is going to be important. So I'm not in a situation where I'm ever really going to get to this knot, but it's nice to know it's it's not going to go anywhere. All right, same deal. We got the spool made on. Now we're going to poke a hole through that. Okay, and now we're going to put it in the monster bass box, and we're going to spool it onto the reel. We've got her nice and damp. So Corlin Braid's amazing. I've been using it for a full year now. I used all their different diameters, a lot of different sizes from five pound tests all the way up to 85. And it's really great line. If you haven't used Cortland Braid, I encourage you to give it a try. Cortland Master Braid, they're made right here in the US in Cortland, New York. Great group of guys that help run that company. And I just, I can't say enough good things about Cortland Braid. So I have over 40 spinning rods and I use them all. And so you can imagine that takes a lot of time and to save money I really have to be accurate of as far as how much braid I'm actually using. And so this little device by Rapala is actually a line counter and it's extremely accurate. It'll allow me to run that line through this little device here and it's digital. It tells me exactly how many feet of line I have on. So if I want 100 yards, I'm going to put 300 feet of braid on and I'm going to show you. I'm going to do that right here. I'm actually going to put it on the spinning rod and I'm going to know exactly how many feet of braid I have on this reel. So I like to place this close on that first guide of your rod. So I take this little plastic strap, I secure it to the rod and I turn it on. I press clear one time. So now it's zeroed out and I'm just going to take this little clip and run this line through it. So I clip one side and I bring it around. Perfect. So now this is actually going to count how many feet I have. So I take my damp cloth. You want tension. You still want tension on this. So I'm just going to grab that like so. And I'm going to start reeling. Okay, so now I just start reeling. I got tension on that. And we're just reeling that braid through here. Now if you don't have a line counter, what I like to do is get enough braid so that, like right here, I, I don't see any mono right now. So at least I know now that that's covered and I can visualize, you know, how many reels it normally takes to reel in a, a nice long cast. And I just want to go about a half more on a long cast, like, like reel it through and be like, okay, this is probably when my bait would come in and just keep going a little bit longer and that's normally perfect. You want to be about a sixteenth or an eighth ounce from this, this ridge here on your spinning rod. I'm now at 200 feet and it's actually getting pretty close. So it's obviously not quite a hundred yards, but I probably could get another 50 feet on here. Again, keeping tension. So this is going to be perfect. I'm right at about 280 feet. I'm happy with this. Since I'm not making long casts at all with this setup, I'm perfectly happy going with 280 feet. In fact, it's almost could have went a little more on the backing, but I think we're going to be fine here. But this thing's great to tell you exactly how much line you're spooling up. Then I'm just going to cut that line. So what I'm also going to do, since this was a fresh spool, I'm just going to write minus 100 on it. So I know I have about 200 yards left of braid on this spool. Now that whole box set up with, with putting a pen or a pencil through here, with this spool mate, you could just lay it on the floor and get the tension just right and, and be able to put this line on your reel 
without that box. It does work. I've done it plenty of times in a pinch, in the boat, wherever the case may be. It just works. And so there's my tag line, and it's not going anywhere. It's not going to fall off this spool at all. It's perfect. So I'm forgetful at times, and a handy little thing, my buddy Ray, I'll actually uh, put his link to the, his company in the description below as well, but he makes these little stickers, man, and these stickers have saved me a ton of time and just wondering what pound test line did I put on my reels. And I do that on all my bait casters. He's got fluorocarbon, he's got braid, and he's got mono. I don't use mono a whole lot. I mean, there is a certain application, some top water applications that I'll use mono. I use hybrid a lot. He doesn't have hybrid, so I use Yozuri hybrid quite a bit. And so if I'm using, say, 12-pound Yozuri hybrid, I'm just going to use a 12-pound mono, and I just know, okay, that's the hybrid. But for this situation, I do have a 20-pound braid. and So, so all I'm going to do is take that little 20-pound braid sticker off of here, and I just flip the reel over. And I normally like to put it right here. If you're using the Vanfords, I like to put it right on this silver, this chrome spot right here. And there, I just lay that sticker on. I'm not sure if you can see that, but 20 pound braid it says. So now I know exactly what kind of braid is on this, uh, this reel. All right, we got the Cortland Master Braid on the reel. I'm gonna put all the links to everything I use down in the description. If you're interested in grabbing some of this Cortland line, the Real Shot, I'm gonna give you a code as well. You're gonna be able to get a discount off of this. The Real Shot carries it. Uh, Realshot.com, same day shipping. They got all kinds of tackle. You can go check them out. Use that code to save you some money. And heck, I'm feeling generous. There's also gonna be a code for the Spoolmate down in the description below to save you some money on those. So that's about as perfect as a setup as you can get. Now let's talk about why the heck I put 20 pound high vis braid on a five foot eight walleye rod when I'm bass fishing. So a lot of times I fish a lot of man-made structure, whether it be crazy boat dock, marina type situations, barges, old metal, just some nasty stuff. And a lot of times I want to get my bait back in little corners, little pockets where these fish are hanging out. And a lot of times other anglers haven't gotten their baits back in these areas for a very long time. I can promise you that. This little setup has produced a lot of big fish in tournaments for me. Fish that help me actually cash a check and place high in these events because of this setup. Now, Listen, I know you're going to be like, oh, I'm really a fish in a cast and I can skip a bait way up under a duck. Sure, I can too. But a lot of times, I'm literally on my belly crawling into a spot and sticking my hand in a little hole and then trying to flick a bait way back up under. I can't, you, you have to be there to see it because it's five foot eight. It's the perfect rod. So I might be putting this stick in my hand, laying on my belly, getting it way up under some, some, some crazy man-made structure. I get it right there in a the perfect spot. I'm just moving that bait real slow, shaking it, shaking it, shaking, because maybe I know there's a big spawner back there. And all of a sudden, boom, I get the bite. And it's hard. You can't really, a lot of times I'm not doing like a crazy hook set. I'm really just making sure the slack's out and I'm just reeling and trying. A lot of times I'm banging this rod. This this will all be beat up. The tip of this rod will all be beat up at the end of the season when I'm doing this. Now I'm not always using this technique, right? It's only for specific situations, but when it happens, I'm glad I have a small rod like this. So a spinning rod's your best friend in those situations. That rod tip is, is pretty stout, like I'm able to pull those fish out of there with this braid. I might be wrapped around barnacles and all this nasty stuff. And so I'm also going to use some heavy fluorocarbon. 14 gamma would probably be the lightest I would go for this situation. And whatever type of bait you're comfortable with, uh, Wacky Rig, Senko, Texas Rig baits are really efficient because you can get that hook exposed and really get tight into that cover. But it's exciting when you get one on and fighting that fish and trying to bring it out of that cover. This is exactly the reason why I use this and that St. Croix Icon Walleye Series. That's why, a wa that's why a bass guy is using a walleye rod. Hey, I know this was a long video. I hope you guys learned something. I know it was somewhat basic. I hope I helped a few people out as far as how I spool up my reels when it comes to my spinning rods. I got a bunch more to do. I'm gonna be here all night. Hey guys, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. 
Let me know in the comments what you think of this setup, if you learn anything, and as always, until next time, we'll see you guys on the water.